Thank you, Mr. President, very distinguished colleague. Once again, Adeola Solomon Olamilekon, representing Ogun West Senatorial District. Mr. President, to start with, you request of me to read the full transcribe of the interview that was granted, or I go straight to the motion. Which do you want? The motion. Okay. 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 The motion. Mr. President, urgent needs to address the false allegation. Let's follow the procedure. The allegations you are describing have been transcribed. Even many that had the first interview on the BBC service may not understand the language. Hence, you notarize the trans transcribed version. So it's important that you keep the entire Senate abreast of what this is all about before you go into your motion. So please read the transcribed version. Thank you, Mr. President. Very distinguished colleague. Once again, Adeola Olamilekon Solomon, Ogun West Centurial District. The full English version of what Senator Abdul Ningi said in Ausa version of the BBC program. First of all, I want you to know that I am a member of the People's Democratic Party and a representative of the people. Based on my opinion, the government hasn't performed to our expectation. Things are getting worse compared to when President Bola Ahmed Tinubu took the leadership of the country. People are going through a lot of difficulties. We live in the village. We are going there to interact with them, and they are lamenting seriously. They have now nowhere to go, so they have no one to express their grievances to than us. I think Bola Ahmed Tinubu didn't even understand the country, and he didn't understand the difficulties of ruling a country like Nigeria. Probably, he has his thinking of what, gov of what governance is, but I don't blame him so much because when he was campaigning for the seat, there was no agreement or promise between him and the people. People were just blinded and voted for him because he supported former President Muhammad Buhari when he was contesting. Some even voted for him because he is a Muslim, and as such, he needed their vote on whether he can or cannot do the right thing for the country. But the most painful thing is that the northerners stood for him and did all they could to bring him to power. But unfortunately, there was no agreement between them and the president on what should be done to the north and the northerners, especially taking into consideration the importance and the significant project that the north has been yearning and aspiring to get for a long time. For example, the Ajakuta project, the Mambila Power project, the dredging of River Niger, and other notable projects. What mostly disturbed my sleep is that we had a budget in 2013 and 2014 in which we earmarked billions of naira, but it was neglected by President Goodluck Jonathan. When President Buhari came, we thought it was one of the projects he will pay attention to. But unfortunately, it was impossible for over eight years. Even road construction like Kano Abuja is not yet completed, as if it was a cause by someone, despite the road being the soul of our travelers in the north. Indeed, we don't attack the government as an opposition is supposed to do. But this is as a result of the situation and the government we have. There is so-called leaders that force, us, that force on us were not voted by us. They brought religious issue and ethnic and tribal issue into the process. They used propaganda saying that there is no Aousa Fulani will be trusted to lead the opposition because there will be no peace. If you look at it from this scenario, the majority of those in opposition are are from the northeast and the northwest. But 
we are not allowed to be the leaders of the opposition in the Senate. This is one of the reasons why we said we will go back and look at what is happening under the umbrella of the Northern Senators Forum, which is under my leadership. But you can't do anything here because it involves members of the ruling and opposition party. It is very difficult to challenge the ruling party under the umbrella. Once again, you want the unity of the North. Transferring of some of the Department of Federal Agency to Lagos. Read the last paragraph again. Sir? It is, it is very difficult to challenge the ruling party under that umbrella. Once you want the unity of the North, transferring of some department of federal agency to Lagos, I wish... I will speak not as a member of opposition, but as a northerner. As a northerner, I know that what I have on my paper, which is the transcribed version, which has been notarized by a court of competent jurisdiction, is what I would like to hear. Some of the things you read there are not here. He said, I want you to start from where you said, this is one of the reasons why we will go back and look at what is happening under the umbrella. So read from there. Okay. This is one of the reasons why we said we will go back and look at what is happening under the umbrella of the Northern Senators Forum, which is under my leadership. But you can't do anything here. You can't do everything here because it involves members of the ruling and opposition party. It is very difficult under, under that umbrella once you want the unity of the North. Transferring of some department of federal agency to Lagos. I will speak not as a member of opposition, but as a northerner. And as a northerner, I know that this is going to happen. We heard about it. And we saw several examples in the past, and that tell us that all that tell us that this is possible. But as I speak, our people, especially the leaders, are yet to take any action to find the solution. That is why I am not even surprised. These things that are happening are two categories. Some affect the not only, some affect the entire country. What we are doing now. As a leader of the Forum of Northerners, we are trying to address the problem to reduce the strength or reduce its strength without allowing politics to come in. About the review of the budgets, this is true. For the past three months, we have engaged consultants to review the budget for us. We have some experts that are working on it line by line. We have seen huge damage that was done not only to the north, but the entire country in that budget. We are surprised to sit, we are supposed to sit with the Senate President to inform him about what we have observed. We want to show him what we have seen in the budget that is not acceptable. We, are, we will not accept them and we don't want the country to continue spending money on those things. Apart from what the National Assembly did on the floor, there was another budget that was done on the ground which we didn't know. The new things we have discovered in the budget were not known to us. We haven't seen them in the budget and that, that was debated and considered on the floor of the National Assembly. Discoveries. For example, it was said that there was a budget of 28 trillion, but what we passed was 25 trillion naira. I want no. Please read that again, because uh, this is the Senate. This is the Senate. We are only an arm 
of the of the National Assembly. Budget is a joint thing between the National Assembly and uh, between the Senate and the House of Representatives. Are you hearing me? And then the executive is also involved in the sense that they bring the budget. And then we look at it, tinker with it, and pass. I want you to read that portion again. For example, read. For example, it was said that there was a budget of 28 trillion, but what was passed was 25 trillion. So there is a 3 trillion on top. Where are they? Where is it going? So we need to know this. There are a lot of things we are coming up with. A report, and we will show the president himself and ask him if he's aware or not. This is what we intended to do. We are to meet the president. We will talk to him about the Mambila Power Project, Ajakuta, and the River Niger dredging. We will talk to him about the Niger, Niger Republic. Recently, they said they will construct a dam, and this is not good for us. The action taken by ECOWAS has affected the relationship between Nigeria and Niger. There was an agreement, Niger, Nigeria and Niger, there, there was an agreement that they would, they would not construct a dam to that so that, so that the Kanji Dam will be intact and we will have them, have, we will give them electricity in returns. Over one billion US dollars was spent on Mambila, on Mambila, BBC has reported. Where is that money? Who collected the money? We need to know and see what can be done. This Mambila is like the future of the North. Every part of the North, every part of the country has its own as a symbol that will save them in the future. One of the weakness in the North, one of our weaknesses in the North is that we don't love ourselves and our region so much that we don't care about the future. We are all just living anyhow. We, we just love the region in our mouth, not at heart, and I'm seriously worried about that. Security challenge in the north. The security challenges, these security challenges are happening in the north. There is nowhere in the south where someone will be abducted and spend even seven days in custody of the abductors. Look at Castina. Samfara and Benri. I am even afraid that one day we will wake up and see the state like Samfara have been taken away from the country. It is, pos it is possible going by what is happening. And this was transcribed by Bashiru Ali Mere, confirmed the above translated version of the AUSA interview used by AUSA service of the BBC on the program Gani Mani Aya, and it's correct, and it is notarized document. Gani Maya. Gani Mani Aya. Thank you, Mr. President. Abun, Mr. President. Mr. President. Abun read the transcribed version. I come under order 9 and 10 that my privilege has been breached. And I focus on that particular area that I believe affects me and not on the entire interview that was granted. And it becomes necessary, aftermath of the various interviews and headlines of various social media newspapers that have come forth as a result of this singular interview. And it is on that premise that I've decided to approach these chambers to seek for protection and also to put up a motion before the Nigerian Senate to know the nitty-gritty of what and what has been said as contained in this particular interview. Just, just to guide, is it from this interview that we saw the screaming headlines that the Senate had padded the 2028 budget with three trillion. Is it from? I 
Uh, because Let me present the motion, then I will explain. Uh, urgent need to address the false allegation against the Senate and the Presidency on the 2024 Appropriation Act by Senator Abdul Ningi, representing Bauchi Central. The motion is sponsored by me, Adiola Olamilekon. The Senate notes that the following the presentation of the 2024 appropriation bill of 27.503 by the president and commander in chief of the armed forces of the federal republic of nigeria his excellency bola Ahmed tinubu gcfr to the joint sitting of the senate and the house of representatives on wednesday the 29th of november 2023 and following the debate of the general principle of the bill at the second reading from Thursday, the 30th of November to Friday, 1st December 2023, the bill was committed to the Committee on Appropriation for further legislative action, and in which Senator Abdul Ningi is a member of the committee. Also, note that to attain the January December budget cycle, the subcommittee submitted the harmonized report to the Committee of Appropriation and the report of the Committee on Appropriation submitted to the Senate and was unanimously passed on Saturday, the 30th of December 2023, and a budget of $28.77 trillion was assented to by the President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, on 1st of January 2024, as shown below. Mr. President, very distinguished colleague, before I go further, the document we have here, the two documents we have here was shared to the 109 senator of the, Fed, of the Senate. Contained in this document, under the volume one, paragraph two, three, and four, is the breakdown of the 28.77 trillion budget that was passed. And from paragraph seven, eight, at the breakdown of the budget, which we call the budget details of the entire NDAs. And when you add this figure together, as contained in this document for the entire NDAs, it comes to 25.4 trillion naira. Sir, there are agencies of the government whose budgets and their details are not contained in these two documents because they are statutory agencies and their money are on first line charge. Agencies such as one, the judiciary. The judiciary budget details is not contained in this document. Two, the National Assembly. The National Assembly budget details is not contained in this document. Three, INEC. The INEC budget details is not contained in this document. Four, you bet, the Universal Basic Education. The Universal Basic Education budget details is not contained in this document. Six, tax fund. The tax fund recurrent and capital is not, details is not contained in this budget. Seven, the North East Development Commission the breakdown of the North East Development Commission details is not contained in this project. Eight, the NDDC. The NDDC budget details is not contained in this document. Nine, the GOE, which is the government-owned enterprise, whose expenditure stood at one trillion and sixty billion naira. Their details is not contained in this document. When you add all of that together, it gives you three point two two one trillion naira. And when you add it to the twenty-five point four, it gives you. 28.77 trillion naira. And it's no new thing. I have here a copy of the last three budgets that was passed. 2021, 2022, 2023. All the details of these agencies I've mentioned are not contained in this document. So for my brother who have put up a consultant to look into this budget and have reported that 25 trillion was approved by the Senate, it's not been fair to the Senate. And I want to say that despite the fact an overture made to the Senate President and complained bitterly about this, and the Senate President requested that let me be furnished with the details and we look into it and necessary action will be taken. We refused. Or instead of doing that, we went to the press and addressed the press. And as of yesterday, my brother Senator Abdul Ningi still insists that he stood by his 3.7 trillion that has been missing within the 2020 uh, 2020 
uh, for appropriation bill. Sir, attach here with in this document are uh, item and the list of those documents that are contained in the budget and those that are not contained in the budget that made up the 28.77 trillion. Aware that the additional increase of 1.2 trillion to that that was presented by the president came during the appropriation process through the additional funding request and some item of expenditure to the committee, some item of expenditure to the committee, they were not included in the bill as submitted by the president. We are, meant, we are meant to address additional funding for judiciary, agriculture, food security, works, science and technology, education, water resources, national assembly, health, national homegrown school feeding program, and please see attached below as I presented. Also aware that the additional source of funding for the increase came from the benchmark of Naira to a dollar from 750 to 800 Naira and the increase in government-owned enterprises revenue and other sources. Alarm that on Saturday, the 9th March 2023, Senator Abdul Ningi, the PDP Bauchi Central, claiming to speak on behalf of the Northern Senator Forum, granted an interview to BBC News, AUSA Service, where he made false and grave grave allegation against the executive, the president of the Senate, and the Senate, whereby he alleged that 2024 Appropriation Act passed by the National Assembly and being implemented by the executive is 25 trillion instead of 28.77 trillion, indicating a padding of 3 trillion naira. On the basis of this falsehood, Senator Ningi claimed that there is a budget done on the ground, meaning that the federal government is operating two national budgets. Further alarm that Senator Sulaiman Kau, NNPP Kano South, a member of the Northern Senator Forum, in particular the spokesperson forum, posted, posted the audio copy of the interview, see attached notorious, notarized English, English language translation on Senator's exclusive social media platform purporting to support the con its content and further spread the false allegation, which immediately found its way into numerous online media outlets and mainstream print and electronic media with such headline lie, Northern Senator alleged three trillion party, exclusive Northern Senator move against Akwabi over alleged four trillion budget party and other similar derogatory headline. The story that this false allegation, including that of 2024 appropriation budget, being against the North, has since generated debate in the media and general public with aspersion on all senators of the Senate and members of the National Assembly. Accordingly resolved, one, pursuant to Order 1B of the Senate Standing Rule 2023 as amended, allow the immediate deliberation of this matter and take appropriate action, deep fit in the overriding public interest as a matter of urgent importance to prevent further breakdown of law and order. Two, take further necessary steps to correct the wrong impression in the public domain of 2024 appropriation budget created by the BBC interview and other national social media houses and social media platform by Senator Abdul Ningi and amplified by Senator Sulaiman Abdurrahman Kau through his Facebook account and other social media platform. Three, take any further decision as the Senate deemed fit and, pro and proper safeguard the integrity of the 2024 budget, which is the pivotal to the revamping of the economy. Mr. President, very distinguished colleague, I so submit. I so move. Yes.